Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another System Designing Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how to implement unit testing for a gRPC service for the three streaming RPCs, server, client, and by direction. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out. So let's open up the main test file first. We're going to be refactoring a little bit of code related to the initialization of the connection that we use for calling the RPC method specifically all these lines on the line right here so as you can see there are some errors in the editor don't worry about it the important bit that we have to extract out is this connection which is being returned by, by the dial context we need to return that and then the user that is going to be calling our function call it new server we're going to be passing is going to be returning that connection and then we can continue with everything else i'm not finished with this but i want to give you sort of like a preview of what we're going to be doing so we refactor that we go a little bit let me get rid of this test line up 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 and instead of being the test function that we had before let's call it new server it is still receives a testing and it's going to be receiving also a function and this function what it's going to be having is a server which is the type implementing the rpc methods there's going to be a grpc server and like i mentioned before it's going to be returning a pointer uh, to a client connection so with this what is going to be happening is that instead of initializing this call for the specific service itself we are going to be calling the register function we're going to pass in the server so the caller of the new server function will be the one doing the call that is right here i will show you that next so we can get rid of this and add register server all right so everything it's correct now we go down again to the test that we had before and now it's complaining because it's missing some argument and that one specifically will be t and the function that we require as well which will be server erpc server and that will be the function and in this case, we're passing in the server itself. So the function that we define above is right here. And then the important bits that we had will be that we're passing in the service that we are defining right here. So all of this is a way to refactor what we have now. If we go and run this, you will notice that the tests are still working. Nothing really changed. It's basically the same code. So let me do a git status. So you will notice that I modified the file. All right. So with this, let's go to the second step, which is actually implementing the first streaming unit testing. The first one will be the server streaming RPC. And in that case, we're going to be using the wearable server that is under the server uh, implementation as well. So we're going to be implementing a test that goes and goes and test all of this information that we have right here. So for example, the result that we're receiving from the server as well as the data that we are going to be passing in initially to the connection that we open one important thing to notice here is that we need to refactor this because one thing that i have is that i'm using rand and you can see that right here and we we could mock those values but we are going to be assuming that there is data that is coming from the server that is somehow in a way hard coded for now but if you can think about this is that the server itself will be calling a data store for example and that data store will be the one being mocked by our test in this case so let me change the code a little bit so we can use it properly and start testing one thing that we need to define will be a results a slice so in this case we are going to be returning uint32 so uint32 and we're going to define i don't know let's define five of values from five to ten and these results are the ones that we're going to be sending from the server to the client so we just do a typical four and we don't sleep anymore we don't want to do that and what we have to change here is the value will be the value that is coming from results and we change the 30 that we had before and we return the value as the minute and we return nil so that's how we're going to be testing if you notice now is that we're going to be sending five values from the server to the client so how are we going to be testing that for testing that we need to create a new file we're going to be calling wearable service test.go 
we open it and in this case I'm going to be going to main test and copy a few lines and now go back to my wearable service test and another package main. We can call it test wearable service and the value will be bits per minute. Okay. This wearable service now is going to be used instead of using user PB, it's going to be using wearable PB and then register wearable PB service server. And now the service variable. We have the client, the client will not be user PB, but rather wearable PB, new wearable client, and we pass the connection. Next, we cannot use any of this. So let me get rid of this. We are going to be calling client bits per minute and what bits per minute is going to be accepting is a context background uh, wearable bits per minute request which in this case we can use the default values because if you remember in the actual implementation we are not doing any anything with those values so if we notice the receive request right here is not actually used anywhere in the code so we can just ignore it but if you were using a real data store you should be considering that as well now if we go back what we're going to be receiving is a stream as well as an error next what we have to do is actually test the test that we have so remember the implementation is sending us five values right so we have we're going to be copying this expectation which are the results and the stream what is going to be happening is we're going to be calling a stream receive if error is different than nil then indicates that something happened next what we're going to be doing is that for each receive message we're going to be testing that it corresponds to the values that we have in the expected slice because that's what we're trying to test right receive values from the server simply matching to the expectation that we know of okay so for doing that we need to define another variable here index used to identify the index of the re expected receive message that we have and then check if the index is greater than the expected. That means that we, for whatever reason, the server is sending us more. So we're expecting five responses. Now we need to get the val that we are going to be supposedly expecting, which will be the index. Now, in this case, we know that if the response value is different than val plus 30, because if you go back to the implementation, you will notice that now in here, we are adding 30 to the value all the time. So we need to make sure that uh, that is considered as well as the other value in the minute. So again, keep that in mind because those are the things that we're going to be testing. Now we go back to the check and we say, hey, if it's different, this means that, well, the test is incorrect. So, and similarly, if res minute is different than val. So at this point in time, we did all our checks, but we also need to make sure that we receive all the five values. Because if you recall above here, if for whatever reason the server closes means that the amount of values were changed, we won't be receiving all of the expected, right? So we need to also check that we receive five values. So for doing that, you just use your typical if index is different than len expected. Well, again, there is another T fatal F. Okay, now if we go around the test, you will notice that now those will be passing as well. Let me all make it uh, verbose so you can see. And you will notice that here is the new bits per minute implementation that we were testing and implementing a while ago. Let's see if this actually works. Let's see if I go to the wearable service and I remove one value. This is one case that we were testing, right? So we go and run the test. We should be getting one error because the unexpected length should be five, not four. We undo the change. Now, if we go and ch make another change right here, which will be the 30, let's change it to, I don't know, um, 40. That's another test that we did. It's failing because we should be having it right here. The last one will be to go back to the expected 30, which let's put 10, and obviously here 10. And it will fail again because we were expecting 35, not 15. And then we just undo this and one more time, test everything is okay. All right, let's jump into client streaming RPC. Client streaming RPC, it's I think a little bit easier because the way we implemented the actual service, 
So if we scroll down and look at the implementation, you will notice that clearly we didn't do too much. We are just doing a sum of the number of requests that we're receiving, and that's the result that we're sending back right here in this small send and close method called. So if we go back and implement this, let me just copy the method name and scroll down a little bit. Let's call it func test wearable service and then you know testing t testing dot t we are going to be initialized again wearable service we are going to be calling new server which implements uh, t register and right here again we do the same thing that we did before receive a con con can be used to con will be the client receiving the client and now we have a stream but in the, instead of calling bits per minute we're going to be calling consume bits per minute is going to receive a context and it's going to be returning a stream and an error so in this case if there's an error now what we have to do is go back again to the implementation like i told you a while ago what it's doing is just basically summing everything so all the number of messages that we send will be returned back when we call the receive of the response of the server streaming RPC. Let's do it. For implementing this, we're just going to be doing a for loop and sending five messages. For this, we're going to be using the stream send. The values don't matter because in this case, if you notice that the implementation of the service is not using any of that, so we can just ignore that. Next, we are going to be closing the stream by calling a stream close and receive if there is an error again now the response should include the same number of values that we sent or rather this, yeah the same number of calls that we initiated before so in this case if you notice there are five so our expectation should be five as, as the total in the rest dot total field let me show you so rest total if rest total is different than five then with this if we run the test you will notice that now it's going to be passing however if we go and change something let's go back and change this five we send 10 we our expectation will be to be 10 right well let's say we don't change that value it will fail because it's expecting now five now let's do another change to make sure that this is working so we do uh five leave it the way it is Five. But more importantly, in the implementation of the service, let's say that total is not being incremented at all. This test will fail as well. So if we go and run it, you will see that now we expected five, but we got zero. So with this, we are testing that the implementation that we are having actually matches the implementation of the service itself. Now, the last one would be the bidirectional streaming RPC. If you recall what this method is doing, it's receiving values and then it will send back to the client the average. So you will see right here, if it's five, then I will send the average that again is divided by five. So every five values, it will send back the result to the client of the previous five values that we sent to the server. So let's implement that in the test. For doing that, let me copy a few lines uh, that are going to be just similar. So it will be this six, seven. I copy this down here. Again, it's going to be complaining. And rename this to calculate bits per minute, which is the name of the method that we're trying to test. And then calculate bits per minute. And this will be is the stream and the error. The important thing about this and the way I like testing bidirectional RPCs is that I like sending the data first and then receiving the data and comparing the results that I was expecting. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be sending five messages again using the API. And then if error one, because I'm, I don't want to shadow the error that I implemented before, we're going to be sending a wearable calculate bits per minute request. And in this case, because I want to keep it simple, the value will be 10. So the average will be 10 because I'm sending 10 five times. So that, that hopefully that makes sense. And then we're going to be just uh, expecting the 10 as the receive value from the server. 
Now for doing that, now we have to close the stream. So we're going to be calling a stream closed and sent. If error is different than nil, we implement a similar logic that we had before, which is basically reading the server stream using an infinite for using the method stream receive. And what a stream receive is going to be doing is receiving those values. Now the important bit about this one, because we are going to be sending only five, is sort of we are kind of cheating in this test because we know for sure that we're going to be only receiving one value, which is going to be 10. But if you are testing different use cases, you need to code that in your test. For example, you're sending multiple values and then you're expecting multiple values back in the uh, response. You need to codify that as well. But I just wanted to keep it, keep it simple so you have an idea of what you should be doing. Now, because we need a result, the result is a float 32, which was uh, defined right here. If you recall, this is the value of the average that we have. So we're expecting that in the final response. So response will be giving us the value. And now what we have to do is if result is different than 10, well, that means that something went wrong because now the logic either changed in the server or our test is broken. Now with this, if we go and test it, we should be able to see the results that we were expecting. Okay, so now we are sending the calculate bits per minute logic that we have. Let's go back and change it. Let's say that now instead of sending 10, let's say I change it and I sending 15. So the expectation will be 15, right? Well, if we run the test, it should be failing right now because the values are not what we expect. Let's do another change, but now in this implementation, the server implementation, if we go back and instead of using five, we use two. So in this case, we definitely change the logic. So we go back and do the God test. Now we're going to be expecting a different value because we are dividing by something else and not the five that we're expecting. And with this, we finalize the unit testing of gRPC RPCs, specifically the streaming ones. Hopefully all of this was useful. And again, the link to the code is in the description below. So please feel free to check it out. Take care. Stay safe. Talk to you next time. See you.